Welcome to Offsite with Oakley Inc. And today I'm going to do something just a little bit different. Normally, um, I talk about the Leafs game and I say how awesome they were if they won. I say how crappy they were if they lost. And then I would normally say that Gustafson should be playing more often and Ron Wilson should be fired. And that's what everybody's used to by now. So I don't really want to be a dead horse. So I gotta, I'm going to do a couple different things today. And I hope you bear with me. First of all, um, Happy New Year. It's 2012. It's a new day. It's a, it's a new dawn. It's uh, new beginnings. I feel like uh, I'm a jazz song. A new dawn is a new day. I feel like I'm feeling good. Nina Simone. Look it up. Nina Simone is just epic. Um, so let's let's get right to it. Um, and, and again, please bear with me. You, I may not be hyper and crazy, but I'm believe me, I'm still hyper. I'm just um, going to go a different route with the with the uh, podcast tape. So last night, uh, James Reimer, Manitoba born boy, got the start uh, in his home province uh, for the Leafs and against the Jets. And um, what can I say? Um, Leafs didn't play good enough to win, and James Reimer didn't play good enough to win. Uh, Wilson obviously thought that because of where he's born, that was more important than two points. So we lost in regulation, and we lost two valuable points to a team that we should, uh, you know, want to actually be better than. Um, and I'm not knocking Winnipeg, because I think they're 14, 5, and 2 in their last um, 21 games at home, something still, or something like that, or 14, 5, and 2 in their last 20 games, or whatever. But, Jets are definitely on a roll, but uh, Leafs weren't good enough last night, and Reimer wasn't good enough. And even though you know the Reimer's got the big contract, you know the long contract, whatever three years, whatever it is, um, it's all about getting into the playoffs. It's all about winning. And right now, the Leafs are not winning, and Reimer's not playing well enough to win. He shouldn't be playing. Jonas Gustin should be playing, and obviously, Ron Wilson should be fired. Now, that's done out of the way. Um, I'm looking for bigger and better things in the new year from the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, and I'm looking to see what happens in their next game. Okay, so, this is what I really want to talk about, 2011-2012. 2011, the Toronto Maple Leafs started off with the win, James Armour had his very first start of his NHL career, and he was um, solid. Uh, Ottawa didn't really show for that game, and the Leafs won that game 5-1. I was actually in that, uh, I was actually at the game, uh, I was in Ottawa, I, was, I went with Garrett, and we had a great time harassing Ottawa fans. Me more than Garrett. Of course, Garrett's a very a law-abiding citizen, very respectful. On the other hand, uh, I delighted in tormenting the Ottawa fans. Um, Toronto Marlies, Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, they had a lot of highs in the season. They had a lot of lows in the season. Uh, players that have played for the Marlies that have also had some cracks with the Leafs. Players like Tim Brent, uh, Daryl Boyce, uh, Kadri, Reimer, Gunnarsson, uh, Bozak. All these guys have had stints with the Marlies and... Um, they've all had, you know, periods of uh, ups and downs, uh, but they definitely give you something to look forward to, uh, especially Kadri. Kadri, as, I, as I've said a long time, is definitely someone I think is going to do big things in the NHL. Whether it's with the Leafs, that remains to be seen. However, um, the disappointing uh, about the end of those seasons for the Marlies and for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs was, of course, no playoffs for the Marlies, no playoffs for the Leafs. I wasn't surprised by the Marlies not making the playoffs. They had to deal with a lot of call-ups to the Leafs, a lot of player movement, which is a standard of an NHL team. But Dallas Seekins proved that he um, can coach. He uh, he was a very, very good coach last year, and he's continued to be a great coach this year. And he had the Marlies fighting uh, right to the very end. Definitely some excitement with the Marlies. Guys like uh, Greg Scott, Marcel Mueller, uh, my favorite player on the Toronto Marlies, Ryan Hamilton, who's now the captain. Uh, he's continued his leadership role this season, and he's played very, very well this season. Love to see Ryan Hamilton get uh, a shot with the Maple Leafs. Don't know if it will ever happen with the Leafs, but I really would love to see this guy here because I think he's a heart and soul player, and I think he could do the good, good job on the third or the fourth line. Uh, Daryl Boyce obviously impresses me, um, and so there are, you know, there are some great things about the Leafs. There's some great things about the Marlies, but unfortunately, um, they didn't make the playoffs, which, which sucks for me because I love the Marlies and I love the Leafs. Um, this year, um, the Leafs are fighting for a playoff spot. This year, the Marlins are fighting for a playoff spot. So there's definite room for optimism in Leaf Nation. We've got a glut of goaltenders who could potentially be all, all number one starters. We've got Reimer, who's the number one. We've got Jonas Gustin, who will be a number one somewhere else. I'll still cheer for you, Gustin, don't worry. Uh, we've got Marco Wuya, who's played pretty well. We have UC Reinich, who's played well. We have Scrivens, who's 
had some periods where he's been very good and other periods he does not look like an NHL goalie. But I still believe he'll be a number one goalie sometime, somewhere. We've got Garrett Sparks coming up through the system very soon, uh, who's another goalie. We've got guys like Greg McKaig, Sondre Olden. And by the way, I met Greg McKaig and Sondre Olden this year thanks to a friend of mine, David, uh, up in London. I got to meet Sondre Olden and, um, and I got to meet Greg McKaig. And I also got to meet Max Tomey, who I'd love to see to be a Toronto Maple Leaf one day. Um, we've also got guys like Stuart Percy in the system, Tyler Biggs. So there's definitely room for some optimism. Definitely. Uh, Brian Adams had a, a, a lyrics in the song where he said, the best is yet to come. And, yeah, I think it goes, funny how times went, but the best is yet to come. I don't know, but I'm getting the lyrics mixed up because I'm old and the song's from the 80s. But the best is yet to come for the Toronto Maple Leafs and, and the Toronto Marlies. I do believe this year the Marlies will definitely make the playoffs. And I do believe this year the Toronto Maple Leafs will definitely not make the playoffs. And I said not make the playoffs. Now, there's a caveat to that. There's obviously an asterisk to everything. There's always an exception to every rule. And I don't believe this current roster, this current coach will make the playoffs. However, if they were to change the roster and bring in maybe a number one center, a legit number one center, uh, a number one defenseman, and a number one goalie who actually is a number one goalie, I think this team could, could go far. Uh, the center and the defense are the two most pressing positions for us. I think our goal thing is not horrible. It's not been good enough on some nights, but I know that that will definitely get better. Um, Number one center, Joe Colburn with the Marlies. He had a brief run up here, a bit of success. He could potentially be a number one center down the road. I would like to see him get a lot more physical. Um, Matt Fratton, who I was not high on, uh, definitely got better, has gotten better as the years progressed. Uh, and he's definitely, to me, has proven that he deserves to be here. Tyler Bozak, I've ripped on you for two years. Two years! This year you've got 25 points. Last year you had 32 points. Definitely a, a bigger improvement. Your defense has been uh, a lot better this year. Same with Phil Kessel's actually playing a defensive game as well. Um, unfortunately, Bozak's hurt, which sucks because, you know, we definitely need him in the lineup. But it gives an opportunity for someone else to come in and, and maybe um, shine. We'll see about that. 2011 was also um, a very sad year for me and for a lot of people uh, in the hockey world. We lost uh, E.J. McGuire. If you're a hockey fan, you know what E.J. McGuire meant to the game. We also lost Wade Belak, who was one of my favorite Leafs, you know. Forward, play forward, play defense. Always a fan favorite, willing to drop the gloves. Just a guy that I really liked, and uh, we lost him this year. Um, you know, even though Derek Bugard passed away, he was not a Leaf, but he was still a hockey player. So, hockey family, you know, we come together, we mourn these players. Uh, Rick Riffin. Uh, in Vancouver, you know, another young guy who I watched play with the Manitoba Moose. So I knew who this kid was. It wasn't just, oh, a hockey player died. I, I mean, I, I was a Manitoba Moose fan. I watched him play. And it hurts to see that someone so young has passed away. Um, Ron Wilson's uncle, I believe it was, Johnny Wilson, just passed away recently. Um, we had, uh, you know, Mandy Schwartz, uh, Jaden Schwartz's sister. Uh, if you don't know who Jaden... Uh, who Jane Schwartz is, he plays for Team Canada. He also plays in the Western Hockey League. Um, property the St. Louis Blues, and his, his sister passed away after a lengthy battle with, I believe it was cancer or leukemia. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure which one it was, but I believe that's what it was. But she passed away. And, of course, the big one was uh, local motif Yaroslav uh, in the, from the Russian uh, KHL. Over 40 people lost their lives. Uh, Dimitra, uh, Karl Chunek, uh, Brian McCrimmon, uh, X Leafs, uh, Karpatsev, and Korolev. Uh, just to name a few. Absolutely terrible, terrible uh, tragedy for the hockey world. We lost over 50 hockey players this year, um, obviously because of that crash, which was a big reason. But uh, players who had an impact in Sweden, players that came over from, you know, uh, from the communist countries, you know, there's a uh, I can't remember his name, Jerry something, uh, but great article on it in the uh, Toronto Star about all the pe hockey uh, people we lost this year, so definitely worth checking out. Um, so it has been rough here, so I'm going to do something I don't do for, for a few seconds. I'm just going to give a moment of silence to those players who've lost their lives this year. Uh, 
that would be a good point, uh, I guess, to end my show. But I have a few more things I'd like to say, and, and then I'll wrap up this uh, uh, podcast, this uh, year review podcast. Uh, I want to thank uh, people who've stood by me all year, guys like Mateo uh, from WeWantACup.com. I had a chance to be on the show. Um, love the guy. He's been a good friend to me, uh, and you know he encourages me, and um, he's one of the reasons why I do this podcast. He's definitely a, a great friend, uh, someone that uh, makes my life better every single day because he's my friend. Guys like Garrett Bauman, um, Garrett Bauman on Twitter, uh, P. Shag, uh, Brad, um, you know, another guy. These are people I call friends. Trish, C.A., uh, another uh, person. Um, you know, these people that I'm listing off, you know, you should follow them on Twitter because they're amazing people. Um, I've also had a chance to talk to so many people this year about the Leafs. Uh, the good points about the Leafs, the bad points about the Leafs, the Marlins. So we got got to go to Marlins games last season and this season. Got to go to Leaf games this season and last season. So I made so many awesome friends on Twitter, and I just want to take this time to uh, say for everybody that watches my podcast, everybody that talks to me on Facebook, everybody that talks to me on Twitter, uh, whether you like me or whether you dislike me, I, I definitely want to say thanks to you because um, love makes the world stronger, and the people that don't like me. Your hate, it makes me stronger too. It makes me more and more determined to succeed, and I'm going to do that. Uh, 2012 is going to be a big year for the Leafs. It's going to be a big year for the Marlies. And I'm predicting that this year, the Toronto Marlies are going to win the Calder Cup. Because I think Dallas Seekins is the coach to do it. I think they've got the roster to do it. The Marlies are winning the Cup this year. So, 2012, I want everybody that... You know, I communicate with that I have that I have friends with online and offline. I want you to have the best 2012. I want you to stay blessed. I want your family to be blessed. I want everything you desire to come true, whether it be fame, fortune, health, wealth, whatever. I wish that 2012 is your year. I hope that you guys will keep watching my show. I hope you'll keep commenting, whether you like it or dislike it. I love the comments, and I definitely want to hear more uh, ideas for shows. I love to hear that as well. And by the way. Go to Offside with Oakley Inc. on Facebook, like the page, and get entered into a draw. Because this um, is my first contest of 2012. I'm going to award some tickets to the Toronto Marlies game for January 7th. So I've got some tickets to give away for the Marlies on January 7th. So what you have to do is you have to go to the podcast, like the podcast, simply click like, Go to Offside with Oakley Inc. on Facebook. You can look it up. It's very easy to find. Click like that you like the page, and you're entered to win. I will be announcing the winners on Wednesday, and I'm going to be picking uh, some winners to win Marley's tickets. So if you want to go see some awesome hockey, the Toronto Marley's guys like Joe Colburn, guys like Greg Scott, Ben Scrivens, UC Rhinus, Mark Uwuya, the great Ryan Hamilton, captain of the Marley's, Marcel Mueller, Corbinian Holzer, if he's back. Uh, Simon Geisbers. Uh, this team is exciting. I guarantee you're going to fall in love with the Marlies the way I've fallen in love with the Marlies. So on behalf of me, myself, and I, I want to wish you all um, the best of 2012. Happy New Year to you. And I hope you continue to watch my podcast. I'm Oaks, and this has been Offside with Oakley Inc. God bless.